The blue whale's tongue weighs as much as an entire megalodon. Think about that for a moment. The largest predator that ever lived, a 50-foot shark with teeth like railroad spikes and a bite that could crush a car, would have been outweighed by a single organ from the animal swimming next to it. And we're talking just the tongue. This is the strange mathematics of deep time. When blue whales finally reached their impossible size, megalodons had already vanished. The ocean's greatest predator and its largest prey never shared the same waters. They missed each other by an evolutionary heartbeat. Let's start with the monster. 15 million years ago, something was growing in the warm oceans. The megatooth sharks had been successful predators for tens of millions of years. But one lineage, Autodus megalodon, became something unprecedented. 60 feet long, 90 tons of pure predator. The numbers alone don't capture it. A megalodon's jaws could span 10 feet across. Its teeth, 276 of them, reached 7 inches long, serrated like steak knives but thicker than railroad spikes. And the bite force? 40,000 pounds per square inch. That's 10 times stronger than a great white shark. Enough to puncture steel. Enough to crush just about anything. But here's where it gets disturbing. Recent analysis reveals those teeth weren't just weapons. They were instruments of destruction. When a megalodon attacked a whale of its time, it didn't thrash randomly like modern sharks. The narrow tips would slip between the prey's ribs. Then those serrated edges would saw through bone and cartilage with a crude surgical efficiency. Some researchers now believe adult megalodons weren't even hunters anymore. They were scavengers. 50-foot bone crushers that stole kills from other predators. Their teeth evolved for fitting between ribs, for applying pressure to targets that couldn't fight back. The ocean's apex predator reduced to cleaning up after others. While megalodons dominated their era, something else was happening in those ancient seas. Early baleen whales were experimenting with a completely different strategy. Size. Pure, ridiculous size. These weren't the 30-foot whales that megalodons could kill. These ancestors were discovering something revolutionary. They could filter enormous volumes of water through their mouths, straining out billions of tiny organisms. The bigger they grew, the more efficiently they could feed. There was no upper limit except physics itself. By the time megalodons went extinct 3.6 million years ago, baleen whales had already begun their transformation. But they wouldn't reach their full potential until their greatest predator was gone. Enter the blue whale. We're talking 110 feet long, 200 tons, the largest animal that has ever existed on this planet. Not the largest whale, not the largest marine animal, the largest animal, period. Its heart alone weighs 1,300 pounds, the size of a small car. Its tongue weighs as much as an elephant. Its arteries are so large a small child could crawl through them. But here's what the measurements don't capture. The intelligence. So what would have happened if these titans had met? Picture this. A blue whale resting at the surface, its 90-foot shadow darkening the seafloor below. Each breath sends a 30-foot column of mist into the air. Its massive heart beats twice per minute. From the depths, death rises. The megalodon approaches with terrible patience. 60 feet of apex predator, its dinner plate-sized eyes tracking every movement. Its mouth could accommodate two grown humans standing side by side. But here's where physics intervenes. Despite having no teeth, no claws, no weapons except its size, the blue whale possesses something the megalodon cannot match. Speed. When threatened, a blue whale can accelerate to 20 miles per hour in seconds. The megalodon, for all its power, maxes out at 11 miles per hour. The whale's tail alone spans 25 feet and contains more muscle mass than the megalodon's entire body. A single strike could shatter the shark's cartilaginous skeleton. A megalodon's brain weighs perhaps 20 pounds. Impressive for a shark, a blue whale's brain weighs 15 times that amount. Blue whales navigate by memory across entire ocean basins. They communicate in songs that travel thousands of miles underwater. They time their migrations to coincide with microscopic organisms they've never seen but somehow predict. The megalodon was a killing machine. The blue whale became something far more sophisticated. 
But this hypothetical battle misses the real story. These animals never competed because megalodons couldn't survive in the blue whale's world. Here's what actually killed the megalodon. Climate change. Not the modern kind. The ancient cooling that began 5 million years ago. As Earth's temperature dropped and ice caps expanded, megalodon habitat disappeared. These sharks were mesothermic. They could regulate body temperature somewhat, but not completely. They needed warm water to survive. As the oceans cooled, the shallow coastal areas where megalodons hunted and bred began to freeze. But that wasn't the only problem. Their prey was evolving away from them. The medium-sized whales megalodons preferred were being outcompeted by two extremes. Small, fast dolphins too quick to catch, and massive baleen whales too large to kill. Then came the final blow, great white sharks. A third the size of megalodons, but faster, more efficient, and better adapted to cooling oceans. They began outcompeting megalodons for the remaining prey. By 3.6 million years ago, the last megalodons had vanished. The ocean's greatest predator simply ran out of things to eat. Here's the strange epilogue that changes everything. The extinction of megalodons didn't just allow blue whales to grow larger. It made their current size inevitable. Without pressure from massive predators, baleen whales entered an evolutionary arms race with their own efficiency. The bigger they grew, the more krill they could consume. The more krill they consumed, the more energy they had to grow even larger. Today's blue whale represents the end point of that process. It can engulf 100 tons of water and krill in a single mouthful. Its stomach holds 2 tons of food. During peak feeding, it consumes 4 tons of krill daily. Billions of individual organisms. This isn't just feeding, it's something much larger. Blue whales process nutrients and redistribute them across ocean basins. Their waste fertilizes surface waters thousands of miles from where they feed. Megalodons were apex predators. Blue whales became forces of nature. The numbers tell the final story with brutal clarity. A megalodon needed 2,500 pounds of meat daily just to maintain body temperature. In a cooling ocean with disappearing prey, this became impossible mathematics. A blue whale, being fully warm-blooded, could venture into arctic waters where krill swarmed in massive concentrations. It could fast for months during migration. It could dive deeper and stay underwater longer than any predator could match. The megalodon was evolution's answer to abundance. The blue whale became evolution's answer to scarcity. But here's the disturbing modern twist. Today, perhaps 25,000 blue whales remain in all the world's oceans. Industrial whaling reduced their population to a tiny fraction of what once existed. We came closer to losing them than megalodons ever did. The largest animal that ever lived shares our planet right now, swimming in the same oceans where megalodons once ruled, singing songs that travel farther than any predator's roar. But unlike megalodons, they face something unprecedented, a species that can alter the chemistry of the entire planet. The blue whale survived the extinction of the ocean's greatest predator, the cooling of the planet, the ice ages, millions of years of evolutionary pressure. Whether it survives us remains an open question. That tongue that weighs as much as a megalodon continues to taste krill in arctic waters. The heart larger than a car continues to beat twice per minute in the deep. For now. Subscribe for more untold battles. Like the video if you learned something new. And ring the bell so you don't miss what history forgot. If you find creatures of the deep thrilling, make sure to tune in next week for Shark Week, where we'll explore why sharks sometimes eat people.